how short we can take off and how short we can land. And then came along this character. He was a professional hockey player. He made it into the ECHL, which is the lower ranks of the pro hockey world. And all of a sudden his hockey skills maybe weren't quite as good as they used to be. So he turned into the rough guy. He turned into the enforcer. After his pro hockey career, he still needed that adrenaline rush. So he decided, let's go to Valdez, strap a pair of snow skis onto my feet. Let's go up the steepest, iciest, craziest looking mountain glacier peak and let's go skiing. That was when the extreme skiing world started to come into effect. This gentleman's name is Kevin Quinn. We call him the boss or the father of Stoll Dre. Because like so many things Kevin has done, he went outside of the box again. And when he wasn't running his professional heliski operation in Cordova or Alaska, Points North Heli Adventures, he flies airplanes. He has a Stearman, he has a Carbon Cub, he's got a 180 with extended wingtips, a big motor, a different prop, Supra, big time. He's had a backcountry SQ2 Super Cub. And he decided to throw a party for his friends. When I say he threw a party, he invited about 200 of his friends out to a dry lake bed in Nevada, northern Nevada. It was on government bureau land. And that worked out really well until the party got a little too big for even the government. Imagine that, the government screwing up a good thing. So Kevin decided to get together with some buddies and they went and found a dry lake bed. I think it was drylakebeds.com. And he bought a bigger dry lake bed. They went and landed out there and they found a dead cow. So of course it is now called Dead Cow Lake. And Dead Cow Lake and Kevin Quinn's birthday party, because it's the third week of October, which is also opening pheasant weekend and Dakota and I have a slight issue with that timing. It's like, I don't know what his mom and dad were thinking that year, but they screwed that one up. But he now hosts what's called the High Sierra Fly-In. It is now over a thousand people, 500 airplanes, and it is five days of, for a lack of better terms, burning man for pilots. There's Tannerite, there's whiskey, there's airplanes, there's jet fuel, there's a hundred low lead. Oh, what else do we have out there? We also have stole drag racing. Because when you had this five mile long dry lake bed that was perfectly smooth, and some of the best backcountry pilots in the world hanging out, they kind of came up with ideas. And one of them was, let's take two airplanes side by side, let's get airborne, fly down to a given point, land, stop as quickly as we can, turn around, and race back to the beginning. And that is where Stoll Dre originated. It has now been going for six years at High Sierra Flying. But the story doesn't stop there. It hardly even begins there because anybody here been to the Reno Air Races in September besides myself? This is the fastest motorsport in the world. From the unlimited warbirds running at over 500 mile an hour the ex-military jets running in excess of 600 mile an hour to your Pitts S1s running around at 180 mile an hour around 50 foot pylons in the Nevada desert flying at 30 feet off the ground and about 10 feet apart from each other. But Kevin had this dream or a crazy idea one of the two and he went to the Reno Air Racing Association and said I think you need to have races for the slowest airplanes as well as races for the fastest airplanes. So last year, they had the first year of Reno demonstration, it was a demonstration category, not an official race category, of stole drag racing occurring. They were taking off and flying approximately 2,500 feet right down the front of the show line, out through the sagebrush, bouncing on their big tires, coming to a complete stop, turning around, flying back the other way. And this was occurring between the heat races for the traditional Reno Air Races. Well, the crowd loved it. Reno Air Racing loved it. The Federal Aviation Administration loved it. Yes, what you're seeing here is now officially certified as the latest class and the first new class in over 25 years at the Reno Air Racing. 
and that is Stoll Drag Racing. And you are going to get to see that here today because Wayne, Nebraska and Mayday Stoll is the first place outside of the state of Nevada to ever have Stoll Drag featured. So you guys are on the leading edge and I really appreciate y'all being out here. Yeah! So, how's it going to work? We're making that up as we go. I'll let you know when we figure it out. <laughs> Not really? Okay. I could be telling the truth. How it works is we're going to start two airplanes in a full-up race. Right now, we're going to do some more qualifying, so you'll see some single airplanes running. But the course is the same general layout everywhere you go. Any race car fans here, dirt trackers or anything? Every track has its own character, right? Daytona's not like Kansas, Kansas is not like Bristol, Bristol's not like anything else. So what we're gonna do is this checkered flag, and you see the men and women out in the safety vest, the Cup Crafters, the Acme Arrow, and the Aopa Stoll Drake banner, that is the start line. An airplane will pull up to that line once they are cleared onto the course and are ready, the start judge will release them. They will take off at full power and fly 2,000 feet down the length of the runway. They're not on the paved runway. They're operating on the grass much like this. I just call it grass. We all know it's alfalfa and there's some winter wheat on the other side and <laughs> other vegetation. They're going to fly 2,000 feet down to the far flag. If you look just below the farmhouse and the shop over on the hill, you'll see another checkered black and white flag. That is the end of the course. They're gonna fly at that point as fast as they physically can. They then have to slow down as fast as they physically can because they have to land and get stopped in less than a thousand feet because there's a ditch at the end of the thousand feet. If you land before that line, you're disqualified. They will then come to a complete stop on heading. If you are off heading by more than 10 degrees, it's a safety violation and you're disqualified. They have to set the tailwheel down if it has a tailwheel. They then will turn either left or right, 180 degree turn of their own choosing, take off and race back. And now the start line becomes the finish line. They must land past that line. And the first airplane to come to a complete stop, which will occur right out here, and set the tail down, is the winner. And let me tell you, when we start two by two racing out here, it is so much fun. Because the airplane that looks fast, you, don't, you can't tell from here whether he's scratched. The airplane that may get back here and land first may be going so fast that he rolls 800 feet down and gets stopped while the guy that was 200 feet behind him lands at 30 mile an hour and gets it stopped first. And so until it's all said and done, you really don't know who's going to win or lose each heat and that's what makes it so fun. But let me tell you a little bit about this course. If you look Halfway down, you'll see a yellow and black checkered banner flag. That's the halfway mark. That's kind of just to give the pilots an estimate of where they are on the course. If you touch the ground, once you take off, if you touch the ground inadvertently, you're disqualified. And you would think, well, why would they touch the ground? Well, the lower you fly, the faster your airplane will go in what's called ground effect. When you fly within one wingspan of the earth, the drag being produced by your wings in the process of creating lift, what's called induced drag, the lower you fly, the less induced drag you have. So in a drag race, that means less drag, more speed. More speed means more winning. More winning means more money. More money means more beer and more airplane parts, and we like both of those. <laughs> 